Hi, this is Keith Bryant for the Keith Bryant Show at Apex 24 on the first day, and I'm here with Bryce from Azemtech, and we're going to talk about some interesting things in their product range. So, welcome, sir. Thank you. Um, first thing, I know you guys have jetting as part of your, um, let's say, your, your, your printing station. Um, can you explain a little bit about how that works? Because a lot of people are unsure of the, let's say, the, the, the mechanism and the process flow. Absolutely. So um, as many are aware, we have uh, an all-in-one combination solution set machine, meaning we have jetting capabilities as well as pick-and-place capabilities inside of the same platform. Uh, the dispensing and jetting capabilities are set up on a quick change mechanism so that you can have different valve types available to you depending on what your pr process needs are. One of the things that we've developed recently and have out active in the field is the ability to dispense. Then utilizing our 2D fiducial camera, we can come back and inspect those dispense areas prior to placing components uh, so that we don't break up the uh, process flow in a single stream. Okay, so basically, it's a, what, what you have isn't a printer now, it's, it's effectively a multifunction machine. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's a, that's a great system, and that goes together with, I guess, you're, you're, you're now, a, from what I hear, you're able to do smaller components than you were previously. So how small are you getting down to now? Absolutely. So we are, uh, we're handling the 0201 metric, or the 008-004 Imperial component sizes, so the very, very, very small up to the very large. Uh, we can add a staged camera system to our machine and go well beyond that 80 by 80 or 100 by 100 component size. Okay, so basically you can, you, can, you can pretty much handle all the odd form stuff down to the, down to the small bits. Yes, sir. Yeah. That's, a, that's a, a, a good move to have before, and I think there's also some material management that you have going on. Absolutely. So one of the things that SM Tech has developed over the years is uh, a suite of very intelligent software. A portion of that is our uh, material management software. So we have the ability to loop into or hook into with an API um, into platforms like an Innovax or an Arcadia or other uh, intelligent material management systems that are out there. Okay, so with that, with that integration, I guess you're, you're also looking at IPC, CFX, and all of these things as a, a let, let's say, a, you know, a, a, a full like, automated control system. Absolutely. If you come by our booth 2049, you'll see that we have the uh, IPC CFX compliance flag up there, and we are uh, compliant across all of our products. Okay. Was that much of a, a software job for you guys to do, or was it fairly easy to, to get the integrations? It was fairly easy. I think because of the work that the industry has done developing uh, um, those protocols, it's quite easy for us to, uh, to be compatible with that. Yeah. And, and my last question, do you have many customers who are actually taking you up on the CFX option and are basically starting to get it in, into their companies? We actually have two new, uh, two new customers that we're working on with two new products projects um, that involve integration around uh, exactly that. So we are seeing more, more and more requests and more development, and uh, it's nice that we're able to link up if people, depending on which equipment they choose in their line, they can see that seamless compatibility of data transfer uh, both vertically and, excuse me, vertically and horizontally in their factory. Yeah, that's that's what we're seeing generally. People are, you know, y y we, we always had the phrase, yield is king. But yield seems to be even more important now, as does downtime and uh, all the other things that people are now starting to, you know, they, they used to try and hide it, but now it's actively sort of monitored and it's becoming a, you know, a really important metric for the business. It is. Yeah. So it, it's good that you guys are out there being able to offer it to your customers. Yes, sir. Okay, well, thank you very much for coming in and sharing some knowledge with us. Keith, thank and you so much. Enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you, you do the same. Okay. Why do something three times when you can do it only once? Using N1 Pass technology, BTU's new Profile Tracer is a next generation thermal profiling tool, providing real time data acquisition for oven optimization. It identifies inconsistencies due to temperature variables at both the product level and the heat source. Profile Tracer measures dual temperature locations as well as vibration all in one pass, giving you time to attend the more important things in life.
At Kaizen, we know it's the science that makes the difference. The right solutions happen when you care enough to ask the right questions. And we understand that your performance is directly related to ours. Science knows why it works, care knows why it's important. Hi, this is Keith Bryant. Welcome back. I'm here with my great friend, Mike Conrad, and we're going to talk uh, uh, about his tech talks, webinars, and all such associated things. So let, let me start with the obvious question that I've been told I have to ask. How was the last webinar? <laughs> well, funny you should ask that, Keith. Uh, you know, we do a, a monthly webinar series that we call Tech Tuesdays. You know, we get into cleaning related topics. So cleaning best practices, cleanliness quantification, all that. And every year I do the same one um, around this time of year and it's on the subject of the new IPC J standard 001H and the changes in how we assess cleanliness. And it's, it was probably one of the most insightful best standards IPC has ever produced for reasons I'll get into. But nobody likes it. In fact, there is a lot of negative energy out there. Why? Well, what do, what do engineers want when it comes to a standard? Give me a number. Tell me what number I need to be at. We'll complain how unfair that number is, but at the end of the day, we'll get to that number. Well, we had a number 50 years ago, this number came out, and all of a sudden that number turned out to be, like, it should never have been there in the first place because it didn't ask enough questions. Yep. It applied the same number for you, for me, and you could be shooting stuff into space and I'm putting stuff in flea collars, and yep. we had the same cleanliness number. So they changed it, and, and they changed it to more uh, an objective standard. So your number could be anything as long as you can prove it works. And my number could be anything as long as I can prove it works through objective evidence. So I, I teach that course every year, and it just amazes me the quite literally hundreds of people who sign up for that. It just gets bigger. The more I teach, hmm. Maybe I'm a bad teacher, because the more I teach, the bigger the classes get, right? So I don't know if I'm just not making it clear or if more and more people are going, okay, it's safe, it's safe to ask the question, right? Yeah. I think yeah. that's what it is. And I, I, I guess the, the one that I'll ask you, which is maybe the hardest one, is can you explain what objective evidence really means? Because that's like the, one of the keys to the standard. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's ironic. It's a world of ironies, because ironically, to test if your board is clean, we don't test your board. We can't because the way the, the method of testing that IPC's gone with is surface insulation resistance testing, SIR testing, under a stress condition, so under heat and humidity to simulate a harsh environment. The whole goal is to either make the board fail or pass after 168 hours of this grueling test under an electrical bias. Um, and if this, so you do that on a test coupon, not on your real board. You do it on a test coupon, that's kind of like your board. You reflow it with materials that you plan on using on your board. You put components on it very similar to your board, but it's not your board. So then, if that board passes SIR after 168 hours, now we have to take a picture of what that board looks like through a rose tester, resistivity of solvent extract tester. Basically, how contaminated is the board from a contamination, ionic contamination standpoint. We take a picture of that. And that now, that number with the rose tester is now your upper control limit, your, your process monitoring limit. So one time, and one time only, unless you make changes, you do an SIR test, you commit to that. After that, as long as you don't make any major changes to your process, um, then all you have to do is roast test your actual production board, once a day, once an hour, once a batch, every board, whatever frequency you think is best, and, and, and do it that way. So it's a great standard because it, instead of saying, okay, here's a number that's objective, everyone uh, that's subjective, everyone needs to meet it, now it's like, just prove it works. And we can argue whether SIR is the best solution for that. It seems to be pretty well accepted. The problem is most people don't do SIR in-house, they send that out to a lab. Yep. And if you're a, an OEM with, with 100 products or if you're a CM with 1,000 products, you know, are you going to take each one of those and send it out for you know, SIR? Yeah. That can get pricey. So I think that's where a lot of the resistance is coming from. A little mm -hmm. bit of understanding it and then a lot of the realization once I understand it that it could be expensive. Yeah. But the whole idea is to make sure your boards don't fail. Yeah, yeah and okay, to, to pick up on the whole idea is to make sure your boards don't fail. 
Myself and a few other people are saying, why not test your board? Right. Because at the end of the day, you're going to throw it away anyway, but it's only one board. Well, and you can't. You get, a, you get a more accurate. You can't response. do an SIR test on a typical production board because the you know you don't have comb patterns underneath BTCs. You you don't have all the right traces to to yeah. attach the probes. So test boards are designed usually with an edge connector or some other place you can yeah. connect wires to it. What is a good idea, starting over, this would be all new designs, is put a little witness coupon on, the side. on your side of your board that break away yeah. or depanelize and have that be an SIR pattern. Yeah. And Because right now, a lot of people with the rose testers say, oh, rose testers are no good, da, da, da. They're, rose testers are really good and, and not really good, depending they do have shortfalls, but they're the only test that actually measures your production board before you send it out in the cold, cruel world, right? Yeah. So you can't just rely on a facsimile. At some point, your board needs to be tested, right? To make sure the process that you set up two years ago yeah. on a good, nice, warm day when everything was yeah. working perfectly is still in order. Um, so roast testing is fast. It takes like two minutes. It, it's been in the business for more than 50 years, it's well understood, it has its limitations, but it's kind of the best of what we got. And IPC is reluctant to change that part of it because there are thousands of these units in the field. Yeah. We, have, we have five decades of documented history on the performance of those machines compared to reliability. Yeah. So to adopt something new would be throwing all that valuable five yeah. decades of data out, right? So. Um, I think it's a brilliant standard that is just being met with questions and pushback from a pricing standpoint. Yeah, and probably also a bit with a, a lack of understanding. But one yeah. last question. Um, okay, if you change your solder paste, you change your, your circuit board supplier, your circuit board finish, then obviously you've got to do it again. But what about if you up issue the board and you go from a load of BGAs to a load of BTCs, for instance, where you've got low standoffs and yeah. a lot of other hassles? IPC has what they call level one and level two changes. Ah. Level one changes are big changes, obvious big changes. Level two changes are surprising. And the amount of requalification or revalidation one needs to do depends on whether it's categorized as a level one or a level two change. Level one I won't talk about because that's obvious stuff. Changes in component types, changes in board designs, things like that. Level two changes that still require some re-SIRing um, could be you moved from line one to line two. Same mm -hmm. brands of machines on line one and line two, but if you move it from line one to line two, that's a level two change. Wow. You got to go back to the SIR table, at least to some degree. Yeah. If you move it, uh, if you uh, keep it in the same line and you, you replace your machine for an identical machine, level two. If, you know, obviously changes in, minor changes in, in profiles, if they exceed the manufacturer's recommendation for your product, uh, level two change. Um, surprising things like that. Uh, so, but the whole idea is, if it's going to fail, we want it to fail in the factory. As, as inconvenient and potentially expensive, hmm. this process of validation, objective evidence can be, admittedly, what's more expensive? Yeah, a recall? It's, it's still the lower cost option of the two. Yeah. Right, particularly high reliability. I mean, yeah. it could be more than a recall. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. you could be on the news. Could be life critical or mission critical. Absolutely, yeah. and when, when when 60 Minutes shows up to your yeah. lobby, wants to speak to the president, yeah. they're not there to hand you a, an award. No, right? it's not where you want to be. No. Okay, so, well, thank you very, very much for um, I'm getting the call that I have to shut up. So All right. We've obviously talked too much, but thank you very much for coming in. Unusual for us, too. Yeah, very unusual. Take care. Thanks, mate. Thanks. Cheers. The Arch FX manufacturing platform. Processing over a trillion data points each month. Bringing value to every level of your organization. That's manufacturing insights for tomorrow.
Hi, welcome back to the Keith Bryan Show. I'm here with Camille from Yamaha. So, welcome, sir. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what Yamaha have brought to the show? Hello, good afternoon. So, uh, my name is Camille. Thanks for uh, introducing me. So, the Yamaha uh, Robotics is always bringing the one-stop smart solution. So, the complete line proposal, starting from the printing, through the pace inspection, through the mounting process and the pre post reflow AOI supported by uh, software package. So all of this you can see on the our stand here in Anaheim. Okay, so you're one of the few companies really who still does the what we what we used to call the complete solution. Um, are you finding now that more customers are moving to this direction so they have compatibility and the machines link together better? Yes, definitely. We have uh, more and more requests uh, for the uh, interfaces to communicate the machine to machine. This is uh, more and more common, and uh, you know there are several uh, advantages of such communication. Uh, for example, the, the process improvement, the self improvement. So the SPI talks to the printer. The SPI can talk also to the mounter. Uh, when the AI can give a feedback to your mentor. Uh, so, yeah, there is a, a lot of advantages. And also in the, the, the data collection, yeah, it's important. So you can improve your process the, after the production. You can monitor your production quality in the real time. So we have a dedicated tool for this. We call it the Yamaha YSAP dashboard. This dashboard can uh, bring the old data together from printing Base inspection, the mounting, pre post reflow AOI uh, can analyze automatically your pickup rate and can give the instruction for uh, the line operator what is going wrong on which, which line, which machine, which feeder, what should be done. So there are algorithms with that checking and trying to improve your process and so okay. on. So, with your machine to machine communication, is that simply automated in the you know, one machine tells another machine what to do, or is there a human interface checking those communications? Yeah, there are, basically the machine can communicate to machine uh, completely independent. We have a several uh, several options, the features for the machine to machine communication. Uh, for example, between the uh, SPI and the printer, we can uh, trigger the, uh, the, the stencil cleaning. We can also offset the the printing position between the, uh, the PCB and the mask, uh, but also we can transfer the PCB serial number, we can transfer the, uh, the product information uh, between the, uh, for example, the manta and the AOI information. We can check what's the quality of the components and the information to the operator, what should be improved on the line, is also displayed on his the mobile tool. So, yeah. We have so plenty you're, of you're, features. You're, you're, you're Depends really on the process. Actually, yeah. the, some processes can be completely automated, so the machine to machine. The other, uh, we have a link from the machine to the human, to the operator. Okay, but obviously you're you're able to produce much higher yields first time than uh, a, a, a normal system without that communication. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the that's the goal to you know to squeeze the machines what we have yeah. on the production floor. Uh, and and improve the quality. Yeah? Yeah. This is everything. Yeah. Everything to have a better OE and a better quality. With uh, I would like to say the less effort, a less skilled operator. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And having enough operators is a problem for most factories around the world. So being able to automate helps. So, so my last question: what, Have you brought anything new to the show? Uh, this year, yeah, we are printing. Uh, we are presenting. I, uh, yeah, I'm sure the first time our new uh, screen printer, YRP10, which was launched on the, to the market the uh, end of the last year. Yeah, it's a 20% more uh, accurate than the predecessor YSP10. This printer bringing also some automation features like the mask exchange, uh, the backup pin exchange system, the paste transfer. So many features with really high accuracy. The repeatability of this printer is a plus minus 8 micron with 6 sigma. So it's already that top level. Wow, that's top uh, level. pretty tight tolerances. Yeah. So I'm, okay. I'm sure that will get a lot of interest at the show. And thank you very much for thank coming you. in and sharing with us. Thanks for this interview. Thank you. Okay.
without reliability. With reliability. A world of difference. Welcome on the journey to better reliability outcomes. Hi, welcome back. Uh, I'm here with Mike Young. Mike Young. I do yes. apologize, Mike. My no worries. brain is only slightly adult. Uh, Mike's here to talk about his new soldering system, and I think we have a, an image that we can put up, and then you can tell us all about how wonderful it is. Well, thank you, Keith. I appreciate that. This is our newest machine. It's called the New Flex. It was built off of a flexible platform that we've had out for a number of years called the Flex. The difference between the Flex and the New Flex is the board size that it can handle. So the the old machine did a 508 by 508 millimeter board. This new machine does a 508 by 810, or I'm sorry, an 890 millimeter board. So it does a very large board. One of the other unique things about this machine is that you can do multiple boards in it one time, whether those boards come in and they are panelized so that you can solder two of those boards in the panel at once, or you can put them into a a pallet and have two soldered, or you can put them in individually and they will come to separate stops and be able to be soldered at one time. So whether you're running very large boards or you move to a, a smaller size board but need to do more production, you can do those in multiple ways. Yeah, that, that's actually, a I've, I've got to say, a novel solution because I've not heard of that one before. I mean, people have had to go bigger and bigger with the machines for LED panels and yes. all of these kind of things. But to be able to basically say, okay, I've got this area and I can do yes. whatever I need to do within that area, whether it's panelized or palletized or whatever, that's, that's got to be a bit of a game changer. It is. And you know, we just had to couple, make a couple of modifications to the way the machine was built in the beginning. Our former gantry system had two solder pots that were sitting side by side, front to back of the machine. Um, this gantry system actually sits front to back from entrance to exit of the machine so that we can come up with two sides on it to be able to, to make that happen. And then we have a motorized pitch that you tell it what the distance is between those two boards and it automatically motorizes to that position so it can come up and do things that way as well. Oh, perfect. So what's it like in terms of throughput? So throughput, it really depends on how many leads that you're soldering on the board at any given time. But if we can take that and double from one board going into it to two boards coming out of it every time. So you, you can typically make a soldering point every few seconds. So depending if it's lines or, or dots, that's going to help you out as far as your throughput goes or yeah. figuring out your throughput. But those are things that we can help a customer with as well. Things like doing simulations to be able to tell them what we can increase that throughput to be. Yeah. And, and I guess when you're comparing it to a machine that doesn't have your flexibility, then you're showing a whole lot of advantages. Yes. There's becoming a, a bigger need in especially military contract manufacturing or, or power contract manufacturing or even power OEMs to go to a much larger board. And there's not a lot of flexible machines out there that can handle that size of board as well. No, it's, uh, as you say, you know, it's... Uh, it's, it's definitely a, a growing market, and you know, it, it's one that creates difficulties all the way from the printing process yes. all the way through. And with you, you guys with a flexible solution like that, um, it, it means if you've got a company who's doing some large boards and some normal stuff, they've got basically advantages in, in both ends, if you understand what I mean. You're absolutely so, right, Keith, yeah. it, it does. One of the other things that we changed recently in some of our machines is on our mechanical pumps. We offer both a mechanical pump or an electromagnetic pump. But in this machine, on the mechanical pumps, the problem with uh, doing maintenance on a mechanical pump in the past is that you've had to take out the entire flow duct assembly in order to get to that to do that cleaning. That can take anywhere from 45 minutes to a couple of hours if you run into snags, and then you have to recalibrate when you're done with it. We redesigned that system so that you have an impeller that goes straight down into the duct system. You remove the chain that is turning the impeller and you pull that impeller directly out. And it takes that maintenance from being about a 45 minutes to two hour maintenance down to about a 15 minute maintenance with no calibration having to be done at the end of it because you're not moving your nozzle. So that's another innovation that we came up with on this machine too. Yeah, that's, that's a neat solution because uh, people have always said with the mechanical ones, they're, they're great when they're working. Yes. But when they're not working, yeah, it's really tough. 
Yes, and, and making I, them work again takes yeah. a long time. Yeah, and I guess when you have to change parts, that's also easier for the for the same reason. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and what's the market think about it since you know you've you've had it out there? What are people saying? Well, we've got we've gotten a very good response. In fact, we brought this machine from. We have a demo lab in the Midwest that we keep equipment at. We brought this machine from our demo lab that we had just brought in new, hoping to set up at the demo lab to have people come in and look at it. And uh, we brought it to the show, and it's actually leaving here and headed to a customer. So the response has been very good. Oh, that's a real shame then. You want to have a demo system. Yeah. Got another one on the way. Oh, that's a, <laughs> that's a good plan. Well, yes. it's, it's, it's good to hear like uh, novel solutions that are uh, within the soldering process, because every, everybody thinks we've been there, we've done it, there's, there's nothing new and exciting happening. Right. So, Mike, thanks for coming in and sharing that with Thank us. You. Thank you, Keith. I no, appreciate you having me here. No problem. Thank you. Enjoy the show. Thanks. Imagine the competitive advantages of producing high mix and high volume PCB assembly on a single SMT line, running non-stop, even during changeovers. It's available now from the only maker in the world providing mixed production SMT line solutions complete with full dual printing, SBI, pick and place, reflow, AOI and board handling machinery for different product dual lane processing in the smallest footprint possible. Make more PCB assemblies with less time, less space, less investment. Hi, welcome back to the Keith Bryant Show. I'm here with, uh, uh, I, I would say, elder statesman of our industry, but uh, Don would probably disagree with me. This is Don from PIT, who's uh, one of probably the, the best known rep faces for, uh, we worked out 30 something years. We're not gonna tell you exactly. Um, and I'm gonna start by saying, show me the trophy that you've just won. Please hold uh, it up for the, hold sure, it up for the for camera. You, Keith, uh, uh, tell us a bit about it. Well, this is a, a new company that I work with, Impossible Objects. Um, they are a manufacturer of fixed ring. They have a special process. They use 3D printing. Um, they've been uh, a great resource and principal for me. Um, they've made my customers uh, very happy. Uh, a lot of short-term, quick fixed ring that, that's been done and They've allowed me to provide really good solutions to some issues in, in the manufacturing process. So. Yeah, I mean, as, as boards get more and more complex, by definition, fixturing becomes more and more complex. Sure. And, you know, when, it, when it's hard to machine something out of a, a block of aluminium, yeah. I mean, you, you guys couldn't see this trophy. But, I mean, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a three-dimensional masterpiece. And I'm sure this is just typical of the sort of stuff that they make. Well, and what's great about... The company itself is uh, we can send them data uh, and they can print whatever we need for them very quickly usually within a week we have a, a prototype fixture design and uh, nowadays that's that's a big deal for my customers yeah because you know, traditional machining was always a long time because you had to send it to a machine shop they had to fit it into their program and process and Exactly. Yeah, it was, you know, then somebody had to check it afterwards and it was a, you know, it, it was pretty demanding. And as they get more complex, then time and expense becomes higher. And sure. I assume this is also a, a cost effective option. Well, yeah, I, you know, I represent um, all of the, the capital equipment lines that go into the process of building a circuit board. So the, uh, the placement equipment, the screen printing equipment, the reflow ovens, um, all of them have a, a possibility of requiring some, some type of fixture. Um, and now with robotics and AOI and SPI, um, I'm, I'm able to supply a quick solution for them and keep the ball rolling, if you will. 
Uh, yeah, and that's that's also a, a, a good thing to hear because you know traditionally a rep company has sold part part of a production line or a range of equipment, but you can offer not only a complete solution, but you can do the fixturing and the tooling that goes with it. They've, Absolutely, that's got to make a, a, a lot of your customers pretty happy. Yep. And, and, you know, it's great being back here in Anaheim again. After so many years, this is where it all started, right? And uh, it, it's good to be back here again. Uh, but certainly all the equipment has changed now. I, I think the big talk nowadays is about AI, and, I, and I'm finding all of my principals are incorporating AI into their software, and we're, we're talking about factory 4.0 and automating as much as we can, where, you know, 10 years ago it was just just a, a forethought and yeah. it was going to be a difficult challenge to get there so oh yeah I mean we're, we're all seeing it it's all it's all around the world I mean I can remember the first industry 4.0 conference which I think was probably one that Trevor did maybe 10 years ago now sure and people sort of looked at it and came out after the conference and said yeah it sounds nice but now I mean you know yield has become more and more important people need to get you know, not only get the yield, but if something's going wrong, they need to know when it's going wrong, when it's going wrong. Yeah. You know, the, the the days of saying, well, we'll 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 build 500 boards, and then a couple of weeks later we'll test them. You know, that's exactly. gone now. They start testing the they start testing the first one when it gets to the end of the line in case there's an issue with it. Then, then they can feed everything back and fix it. And yeah, you know, let, let's call it smart factory industry 4.0. It's becoming a real driver. And then we look at the fact that we can't get engineers and technicians anymore. And if people can have you know, a, a line with three people running it and it's effective rather than 10 people running it, then it's a huge bonus for everybody. And sure. you know, we used to worry about mechanization actually taking jobs away. But now it's allowing people to make stuff because Absolutely. they can't get the people. And, and you know, the contract manufacturers that I deal with uh, in Long Island and New Jersey, Pennsylvania, they're, they're all trying to achieve that 99.7 yield or better. And, and some of them are, are actually making it happen. Yeah. And, and they're being very successful at it. And it's all about automating and yeah. having the right fixtures. And I was going to say, it, 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 it becomes, you know, the support infrastructure becomes a lot more important from maybe them even holding spare parts for the machines, their engineers being able to do, you know, basic maintenance, emergency mm -hmm. repairs, yep. and then obviously the step to you being able to offer them local support and then the support you've got from your principals. Exactly. And then obviously stuff fitting in with uh, tooling and everything else in between it. So, yeah, yeah it's an exciting time. Yeah, it is, it is. And, and I got some really great principals, so yeah. it's uh, picking and choosing the correct ones and having the correct support team that they have in their service departments. Um, and they seem to be growing and getting better. So it, it is a much easier time to work with, but it's much busier now, so. Yeah, it's much, much better. And you shared with me before that you have no retirement plans and you're really enjoying what you're doing. And uh, yep. I think anybody who looks at you and sees the smile on your face knows that uh, that's a true comment. So thank you for coming in and sharing with us, sir. No, thank you and for having me, Keith. I appreciate it. And been a pleasure. Uh, many more years of success and maybe even bigger and better success. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, for joining the Keith Bryant Show on the first day of Apex, and we'll do it all again tomorrow. For micro dispensing, there is one product line that is proven and trusted by manufacturers in semiconductor packaging, electronics assembly, metal device, and electromechanical assembly the world over. DL Technology, superior pumps and needles for the finer things in life.